Hey guys, my name is Paul Baker and I'm an ex-flat earther. Today I'm going to let you guys inside my mind and go through the process of how I became a flat earther and why I walked away from the flat earth. So, am I an ex-Flat Earther coming out and telling you about my journey through the Flat Earth? That's correct guys. The video will be made up of three parts. Part 1 will be how I became a Flat Earther. Part 2 will be my journey through the Flat Earth. And Part 3 will be how I left the Flat Earth. As you can probably tell, I'm from Auckland, New Zealand and I live on the shores of the Manukau Harbour where I have been doing observations for the past two years. So we won't waste any more time, we'll get into part one. So I first heard about the Flat Earth in 2016 through a friend. A friend approached me, I think it was on Facebook, sent me a few links saying, hey, what do you think about the Flat Earth? And to be honest, before that, I never really heard about it. And so I thought, well, I'll take a look. But I thought he was having me on at first, so he sent me a couple of links of I think some fake NASA footage and I instantly thought oh this guy's a little bit crazy because I was I was a big space guy I loved Neil deGrasse Tyson and all the space videos documentaries that's what I was into and and so it was a bit of a shock to hear him talk about this so I initially thought this guy's a bit nuts and but he sent me a few links and I landed upon a video called 200 proofs the earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubay and I um, found it actually quite convincing and then I stumbled across Dave Murphy, uh, a TV interview that he made, and that was really convincing as well. So I was kind of in a little bit of shock, and I'm, I can't remember what I did or where I went from there. So I asked him a few more questions, and he was telling me what he thought, and et cetera, et cetera. So I decided, well, I'm going to keep an open mind. I trust this guy, and these videos seem quite convincing. And I'd never really thought about the globe model like I knew the earth was a, a globe and and I understood science and and gravity and and all that sort of thing so I, I never really questioned the globe model until it was put to me and, and and some critical thinking or crucial questions were posed to me and and then I it got me thinking and I kind of trusted this guy so I kind of was like eh, not sure I found myself on the globe busters channel and then it just snowballed from there then Geronism and then I stumbled across Nathan Oakley's show and I thought well this is a debate show initially I don't think it was a debate show it kind of was I think it was him and Anthony Riley doing measurements and whatnot at the Isle of Man or something like that when they first started they were just getting shit from the ballers and they were just getting absolutely hammered but I did like the idea of a debate show so I was drawn to Nathan Oakley and his debate show and soon realized that the the main flat earth argument was to dismantle the globe model step by step and, and, and I could see where they were going with it. And But for me, and probably what most people want to know, is the main reason that I, I think I became a flat earther is that it offered something a little bit different, right? The difference was the possibility that we were created and that our lives do have some sort of meaning and hope because before we were a speck of dust in this infinite universe and we meant nothing and that was conveyed to us quite clearly by science and and the media television it was all conveyed to us there was pictures everywhere you are here and this little speck of dust we mean nothing so i guess what i'm trying to say is that for myself it offered something a little bit different right now i'm not religious and I'm not sure because I can't verify. I don't know about any gods. And Jesus, was was he real? We don't know. Our history seems to be a lot of... There's a lot of conflicting evidence in history. I'm not going to go into that. But these are just some of the reasons why I gravitated towards the flat earth. So before we go on, I just want to show you guys my brand new channel. I'm getting a few subscribers. I've got a few videos out. Hit the subscribe button. Come along this journey with me. And... Help me get my story out there. I'd really appreciate your support. Cheers, guys. But also, why I think 
I moved to the flat earth easily because I didn't study physics. I didn't study geometry. I don't know anything about that. All I was taught was the basic science that we're a globe. You know, what we're taught in high school or middle school or whatever you, you guys call it. We call it high school here. I didn't go to university. Now, a lot of channels like Res Rhetoric, Wolfie6020, all of these guys that came out, Sly, Sparkane, all of these guys. I guess these guys had learnt physics, they'd learnt the model, they learnt everything about where we came from. It made sense. And looking back at it, I never really went into that, so I hadn't really learnt about that model. Right? So it was all new to me, and, and before I knew it, I was hooked on the flat earth and I was just ignoring the globe side. I was ignoring all the evidence. I was ignoring the lunar eclipses. I, would, I was ignoring evidence, logical evidence. I, I mean, I wouldn't go to those channels. I never went to any global channels. I never watched any of those videos because I wanted, I had a bias. I wanted the flat earth to be true. Yeah, so the evidence I saw, it was like, wow, what if this is true? And so that's so that's why I stayed in it so long because I so desperately wanted us to be to have some sort of meaning here yeah so that's basically the reasons why I became a flat earther it's not because I'm gullible because I knew deep down inside it's like you know there's Einstein there's all these great minds and physics and you know space videos and the ISS and 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 all of that sort of thing so I mean I just just ignored a lot of it because I didn't I didn't want that scenario. I didn't want it. I wanted this other scenario, right? What else drew me in as well was, it was almost like a package deal being a flat earther, mainly due to the fact that the governments, you know, would have to be lying to us about the shape of the earth, so every other conspiracy must be true. Therefore, like the JFK, the moon landings, everything like that. So I found myself, it was an exciting time, you know, it was, I, I, I won't, I won't lie, I was, you know, I had plenty of time on my hands because I work part time, I do quite well, I'm not super wealthy, but, but for me, time is crucial, time is the most important thing to me, is having time to do what I want to do, not working for somebody else and giving them my time. So it was exciting to me to go down this track because I never thought about conspiracy theories before. I decided, let's look into this, and it was exciting for me. It's like, wow, well, wonder if it is true. It could be, you never know. So these are the main reasons that sort of drew me into the Flat Earth. It was not necessarily that it, they had all the evidence. They had pretty good logic, and it was like, if you really think about it, are we really, is that really happening to us in space? Is it, you know, are we traveling at these crazy speeds around the sun is it is, is that all really happening because you know some of the videos i did see from nasa did seem a little bit it did honestly they did seem fake there was bubbles in space there was all sorts but of things happening and now i'm not saying that i don't believe in nasa or the moon landings necessarily but i can understand and i could see possibly how they did fake the moon landings because a lot of it doesn't make sense I need to verify things for myself, right? And that's and that's what I'm doing. So the journey I went through is how I got into the flat Earth, and I, it was a journey for me. It was a an experience. It was a it was almost trying to find yourself, you know. And what was important to me ten years ago is not as as important to me now, and I think everybody would agree with that. Now, also looking at the moon landings, I think this is only a a theory this is just a thought I'm, I'm i'm not i don't believe it necessarily but i can understand it they could have faked it because of the russians to show a, you know their power and might to be the world leaders because the russians maybe were taking over i'm not going to go in, into it too much they've been there six times in about five years and all this technology a lot of it doesn't add up it, it, there are a lot of people that don't believe it so my thinking could be that space is real the moon is real we probably could go there but i don't think we can at this stage because we don't have the technology to get through the radiation because there's there's a lot of radiation out there and and then they had to keep up the lies so it was almost like they're putting these rockets up and showing us the cgi stuff and the cgi graphics and special effects are just absolutely incredible you couldn't you couldn't tell and they look pretty dodgy back in the day, I have to admit, but I, I can't be can't be sure. There's no labs on the moon, there should be labs all over the moon. There should be, 
live stream cameras on the moon facing earth so we should be able to see all of that being absolutely incredible so these are the types of things that are running through my mind um, now but also back then so those were the sorts of things that drew me into the flat earth now was i gullible naive idiot moron yes exactly a hundred percent do i regret it no i don't not at all because i'm a proud ex-flat earther now there's the, i'm a rarity now i'm not saying i'm special i'm not saying i'm better than anybody else but what i'm saying is that i went through that journey and came out the other side and it was only basically until covid came about that a lot of things changed for me and all the misinformation and the censoring of the internet that kind of confused everything for me and i decided to look into the globe side but that is in part three basically to conclude part one those were the the you know there's those those factors that i talked about that drew me into the flat earth and that kept me there for so long it's about hope yeah it's about hope what ifs it seems like the governments are lying about this and that what if they are lying about this does the flat earth seem conceivable it did at the time so it was just an idea inside my mind and it was just a phase in my life i guess that i went through and i'm happy i went through that because i understand every flat earth argument i've seen it all i've seen just about all of nathan oakley's shows i've seen a lot of journalisms i've seen globebusters ranties stuff drew me in as well so all these types of things drew me into it so it was easy to ignore all the globe evidence because i had all of these arguments in my arsenal and i just bring this out bring that out well we haven't mapped the flat earth yet etc etc so i was quite happy doing what i was doing but also but also at the start when i first started and, and i became a believer and i would try and debate some of these ballers and they had so much more information than what i had yeah it feels like now i'm a born again global just starting out into this arena whereas i'm four years into it but when i first started there was a lot of comments i was just getting hammered and i had no answers for it and so i was googling things and trying to get an answer to to come back at them and and i mean i probably looked stupid some of my arguments were just just ridiculous because i had no idea actually about the globe model all i had was what flat earthers were telling me about how to dismantle the globe model step by step there were certain areas they wouldn't go into their reasoning for that was well we haven't had time yet we haven't had time to set up a model map so the arguments as i say like there are some very clever people out there as i say eric dubay dave murphy david wise journalism they were all about logical thinking i guess they didn't have any science math they didn't have any of that it was their so-called logical thinking like do you really think we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour how is how can all this water be sticking to to the ball moving through the vastness of of the universe at these ridiculous speeds and so their argument was very convincing because it is it's it's i think for an average person like me it's very difficult if you don't know geometry you don't know science you think you know but you don't really know and it's not until you critically think about it that you come to the realization that real scientists against flat earth scientists it's just not the same and i can understand how words have definitions and how people can uh twist certain words or scenarios to fit an agenda a, a certain bias so i'll talk about that more in part three so i hope you've enjoyed part one part two coming right up guys cheers so now we're going to take a look at my journey as a fully fledged flat earther and it all began i guess on youtube when i started commenting i just had a normal youtube channel and i was commenting on flat earth videos as well as globe earth videos i wouldn't watch the globe earth videos because as i said in part one i had a narrative i had a bias i wanted the flat earth to be true and i'd already made up my mind that that's what it was it was it was flat so anyway i found myself debating against a guy called tim a a lot of you may know he's a passionate globe earther who i think was an engineer and helped build part of the iss maybe some satellites and whatnot you either like him or you don't like him he's very passionate he'll call you a flat tard a retard a moron and he's quite happy to do so i had this battle with him because i didn't want to i didn't want him to have the last say in the comment section i wanted to have the last say so it was i mean a love-hate relationship with tim 
I do like Tim a lot. We're still friends now and he's going to definitely be watching this. So anyway, I've battled hard with Tim over the years. It's been probably a good four years now. But not only with Tim, but with other Globers as well. I'd have the huge arguments and these guys knew a lot more than I did. And I was actually learning from them. I'd read their comments, but I wouldn't take it in and I'd just, just automatically dismiss it. But I think subconsciously, deep down inside, it was stored away. And I was actually learning a lot about the Globe model. So I was a commenter on videos for about two years. But in that time... I gravitated towards Flat Earth Debate Show. They had Sleeping Warrior, Nathan Oakley, Arwen, and then Ranty came on board. That's when things did change for me because a lot of what Ranty was doing, he was he had a bought a P900 and he was showing a lot of footage, right? He was showing so-called Flat Earth evidence. I was really drawn to that. Ranty was a good speaker. He seemed believable. So I just, I ran with the Flat Earth Debate Show with Nathan Oakley. And to this day, I still listen to a lot of his stuff. And I like Nathan Oakley. I've got nothing against him. I still have a lot of respect for a lot of Flat Earthers. It's their journey. Whether they got into it to be a YouTuber, to make money, or whether they genuinely believed it, that's not for me to say. However, I like the research that they have done, and I like listening to what they have to say. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I wanted to be a part of something, and it was. I was in the chat there, Nathan knew who I was, and I used to regurgitate what he said, because I did look up to Nathan. No offence to you, Nathan, if you're listening. You've got your journey, and I'm going down mine, and I still respect everything you're doing, and still watch your guys' stuff. I'm not here to mock flat earthers. I'm not here to do any of that. If anything, I'm here to mock myself, yeah? Not not anybody else. I can't I can't speak for anybody else. I went from this normal guy on YouTube commenting to watching Ranty stuff and thinking, well, hey, I live on the shores of the Manukau Harbour. I've got an area of well square miles to film, so I decided to buy myself a camera. Now I didn't want to buy a P900, and I did some research and figured out for the area that I wanted to film, all that was needed was something like a Canon SX60, which is what I bought. Now this camera has an 85 times zoom with a 65 times optical zoom, so I thought that'd be plenty enough. So I bought the camera and ventured out to Cornwallis, which is where it's a beautiful place, by the way. I mean, I, some days I turn up there, there was just no wind. Ah, oh, people were fishing off the wharf. It was just magical. People were diving for scallops, and I mean, ah, oh, walking on the beach with the beautiful native trees and bloom and the birds. It was just just a lovely place to be. So I initially locked onto the wholesome cement towers, which were about 120 feet above sea level and about 12 miles away. So I did initially looked at that and then I also the airport was Auckland Airport was out there as well. And that was right on the shore of the harbour with the airport runway about 15 feet, I think 15 to 20 feet above mean sea level. So I focused on the airport it was quite difficult because you could never tell when a plane was going to land or or take off so i managed to get some pretty good footage of planes landing and taking off in mirages also on top of the water it looked like but as you can see i'm just going to play i'm playing some of my videos when i was called flat earth nz so that's when i decided i've got this footage i'm gonna I started a, another youtube channel called flat earth nz so I started that channel and I managed to get a few subscribers, but I never, I mean, the footage I got wasn't clear either way. And, and in, initially at the start, I actually had some footage that favoured the Globe site and I didn't put it up because I thought, oh, I don't know, I've, I've actually, I found some Globe Earth proof and, uh, and, and I was worried, you know, I was worried and I thought, no, stuff it, I'll put it up. But I never said this is Globe Earth proof. I, I just put the, the footage up and it was basically, it did show a lot of compression. But I had seen a lot of the videos, Ranty was talking about the compression and, and the main reason I went down the track of buying a camera and doing my own ob observations is that I wanted to capture similar or the same, the same observations as Ranty to confirm and validate and verify it for myself and then possibly take that footage onto Nathan Oakley's show and, and kind of present it. And it never really worked out that way because I didn't get anything that was decisive or convincing enough. And I remember being out there one day, and I could see this light at the airport, and I was just standing on the shore. So I could see this light, and then I just ducked down, and the light was gone, and I was like, oh my god, that's it's proven curve. Because at that time, the angle of attack, and the, the, the narrowing field of view, or the, the diffraction limit, 
it wasn't really talked about a lot and I think it was just started out so I wasn't quite sure whether it was that but it to me it looked like it was it was curvature so I I thought nothing of, well I, I just put it to the side no no carry on so I carried on doing a, a few more observations and and that time also Wolfie 6020 had a lot of stuff coming out and also Ruhith was doing some observations and he was on Nathan's show I'm pretty sure he was on there his show also debating about refraction etc etc so it was about this time that uh, there was a lot of confusion so I decided to because I wasn't really sure I mean I could see the flat earth side and I heard a lot of the globe arguments as well and and somebody I think I can't remember whether it was an Aussie guy or a Kiwi guy was saying you're embarrassing your country and that kind of resonated and stuck with me so I decided I didn't want to bring my country into it because I love my country to be honest and so I changed my name to NZ and I think it wasn't long after that I decided to put myself on the fence as a gleam sort of a type guy as a uh, what do you call it as as an earther I, I I wasn't a flat earther and I wasn't a globe earther I was in the middle I didn't quite know I was just being honest with myself because I've been looking I've been looking for quite a few years and I never found anything that convinced me either way so I was a little bit confused by that stage and that's why I changed my name to NZ I think I changed it a while back I was still doing observations and I was making a few videos saying I'm not a flat earther I put myself on the fence and everyone was still calling me a flat earther Tim especially and and a lot of the others and I was getting a bit frustrated with this but I knew myself that I, I honestly did not know and at the time that I thought the only way to figure this out would be a flight across Antarctica and that would settle it once and for all and I thought surely every all the flat earthers would accept that right now I know Wolfie 6020 has offered that and there's somebody else that's recently offered that no flat earther has ever decided to look into that or, or maybe crowdfund for that but I'll talk about that more in part three but getting back to my observations I understood that the optics were very confusing and the debate had been going on for quite a few years and nobody would budge either side the flat earthers had their argument they were trying to create a model as such which was an explanation for what they see and why they see it on the flat earth and the globe has already had that with refraction that wasn't clear evidence so I decided to stop filming out there and I decided well I'll concentrate on the Auckland Harbour which is on the east coast and the Manukau Harbour was on the west coast different tides by the way so I ventured out to Te Aratu and started out there and was looking through to the Devonport Naval Base and I never really caught anything there either what I did find was that I understood how mirages do block objects so I, I did understand that so to conclude my flat earth journey it was a roller coaster it started out slow and then it kind of peaked and then it plateaued and then it sort of fell off and then COVID came about I couldn't get out to do any observations and I, I concentrated on the COVID pandemic that was happening around the world and that's another story I'm not going to go too much into that I'll talk about that briefly in part three which is coming up in a minute but basically to conclude my journey I was a fully fledged flat earther I then wasn't sure so I put myself on the fence and decided to do some more research and that's coming right up in part three so if you like the video consider hitting the subscribe button and thanks for watching part three coming right up thanks guys so a lot of people have asked me why I left the flat earth and it's quite simple really it's because money <laughs> I was offered loads of money I was approached by Ruhif thanks Ruhif and he said to me look if you uh if you want to be a leave the flat earth and, and become a glober then uh let me know and I'll put a good word in for you and we'll try and get you up to tier two glober status so <laughs> but, so I jumped at it I was like yeah you can buy me off no worries so I went from living in a beach shack like this and four weeks later after I made a few videos I'm now living in this place and life couldn't be better <laughs> anyway <laughs> no actually Ruhip was the first one I approached actually when I uh, decided to leave the flat earth and I do like Ruhip even though he's an Australian I do like him but he's, he's he's a clever guy he's got a lot of good things to say and and some of his stuff actually swayed me over to the globe side also 
But I want to go back to the, the first time that it dawned on me that the flat earth is impossible. What set me down this track was because as I said in part two, I was on the fence and I didn't know either way. So I wasn't sure and I decided to do a bit more research. And I used to watch Brandon's show a lot. Now at this stage, Brandon had taken over Ranty's show, his channel, and was just continuing on with the live debate. So we had people coming in and out and, and what they were trying to do was devise an, an experiment that proved the earth was flat. So this went on for a good month, about four or five weeks, and it kind of dawned on me that th there's no experiment down here that can show the shape of the earth. It's, it's near impossible. Optics, as I've explained in part two, is, is almost impossible. And, and the flat earthers are just, they're not having any of what the globers say. They're just not having it. Then it dawned on me that the reason these flat earthers are trying to devise an experiment to prove it's flat is because they don't know. They don't freaking know. That's why they need these experiments. They keep calling themselves flat earthers, right? Whereas, and I mean, and I'll go back to, I'll look at Nathan, because Nathan, he's not devising any experiments in the flat earth debate. He's not doing any of that, because he knows it's himself. He knows it's flat. He believes it's flat. So why does he need to show any uh, experiments to prove it to other people when he can just use his method, which is a scientific method, gas laws, etc., etc.? He's gone down that path. So he's not trying to devise any experiments, because he knows it's flat in his mind. And that's, that's his journey, I've talked about that, that's fair enough, nothing to do with me. So everyone over at Brandon's, they're trying to come up with an experiment to prove it, because they don't know. So I decided to have a look on Brandon's channel, he's got another channel called Brandon Toy. So I went onto that channel, I was looking at a few of the videos, and there was one that of the 24 hour sun in, in Antarctica. Now this video was looped, the Flat Earthers picked up on that and used that to say that it was fake. So... Anyway, so I was reading down in the, in, in the comment section and I saw somebody post a link to Vimeo and it was of a, of a guy called Robert Schwartz, I think his name is, who did a five day time lapse of the 24 hour sun in Antarctica. So I went over to there and had a look and it was like, wow, this is pretty cool. It doesn't seem to be looped. It's genuine. He spent a lot of time there and he's reputable. So that really set me down the path and then I decided to look into the orientation of the moon in the north and southern hemisphere because i was in i was in london for about three years and i when i first got there it's like everything's backwards it's like north isn't that way it's that way and everything was all backwards for me and i i couldn't figure it out and then i, I finally realized oh okay I guess because i'm in the northern hemisphere now so i didn't think any, anything of it but it was only up until sort of recently i, I realized oh, okay because i have experienced that i've verified it for myself so i thought okay I, I, you know the moon's orientation is upside down down under here in New Zealand. So I had a look at a few videos and I understood why the orientation was like that. So I watched another video about the moon's orientation because the flat earth map model, not that they have one, can only be a circling sun and moon, yeah? With Antarctica as the ice ring around the edge. We know that because in the North Pole, the sun definitely does circle and flat earthers have been there to film that. I think Dee Marble went up there and filmed it, Daryl Marble, and it was definitely a circling sun. And then in this video, I saw a picture of how, how the moon's angles and different faces would look on a flat earth for observers in different locations, as you can see in the picture here, and it would look, look totally different on a flat earth. I was thinking, it just got me thinking even more and more. I was like, okay. And then and then I looked into that and thought about that logically. And that was exactly 100% correct. So by this stage, I was 90% sure that the flat earth could not be possible. It's just, just not possible. And then I heard there was going to be a lunar eclipse in about a week. And I've got a good camera with a good zoom. So I thought, okay, well, I'll have a look at that and I'll verify. So when the eclipse started, I was looking at different videos online. A lot of people were live streaming it. And, and one other thing that dawned on me is that no flat earther was covering it. If it was bullshit and couldn't happen on a globe, then all the flat earthers would be covering it, showing it live and showing how it couldn't be possible. Flat earthers just go quiet. They go silent. It's like Fight Club, <laughs> you know? You're just not allowed to talk about it. So when the eclipse is starting out, you can actually see a shadow moving across the moon, right? Now, with my camera, I would zoom in and you could definitely see it was 100% a shadow. I've got these videos here, you can see, clearly see it's a shadow, so something's causing that shadow, right? And the globe model models it absolutely perfectly. So that was basically the, the clincher for me, and it was something I could verify myself. I filmed it, I can actually see how the moon's orientation is upside down in the southern hemisphere, and 
so I thought back to the flat earth map and model or what they don't have one so I mean people will just say well you don't know what it is it could be something else and it's like what is it what is it and I've heard about Rahu and K2 some invisible magical sun or moon somewhere else that's causing it to happen on a on on, on a flat earth and I mean I'm not buying it there's nothing physical moving in front of the moon so I just want to explain how a lunar eclipse works and why we get the redness that we see. A few flat earthers have asked me why the moon goes red and it's quite simple really, it's basically refraction. It's the same reason why we have sunsets. They call it a blood moon, I think they used to call it something else back in the day. It doesn't go red, it just goes an, an orangey colour. But that's dependent on what's happening in the atmosphere at the time. That's why the lunar eclipses are different from year to year because it's dependent on the atmosphere what's happening in the atmosphere as the light's being refracted so I'll just explain it to you now so what happens is the moon enters the penumbra and then the umbra so I'm going to talk about what they are next but for the purposes of the lunar eclipse I'll just show you this part as the moon enters the penumbra the moon slightly darkens and we can see this I've seen it I've verified it for myself and then after that phase the moon enters the umbra which is the darkest part of the shadow. So when the eclipse has finished, the moon, right, leaves the umbra and moves back into the penumbra, returning to its normal colour again. So people ask, so if the sun is blocked, why does the moon turn red? When the light from the sun goes beside the side of the earth, shorter wavelengths like the blue are scattered by the atmosphere. So by the time the light has reached the moon, more of the longer wavelengths like red are left over on the earth the exact same thing happens during the sunset right i don't know how to make that any clearer to you guys about a lunar eclipse so another common question that i get asked or globers get asked is during a solar eclipse the moon's shadow appears to be larger on the earth when it should be smaller i'll demonstrate to you what is actually happening there it's called the umbra right that's a smaller shadow and the larger shadow is a shadow that they see is a penumbra which is this shadow here you can see my mouse cursor so that's why a total solar eclipse which is basically total darkness only happens in certain areas on earth so anyway looking here we can see this is this is actually to scale there's the earth there's the moon and that's the moon's shadow being cast on earth and we can see how the umbra which is a smaller darker one there gets smaller so it does get smaller and I can show you this in this demonstration. So as we see here, I'll just pause it. We have, this is Earth, right? This is the Moon. And we'll see the light source. You guys can do this at home. Simple. We see a light source. So this is all dependent on the distance between the Sun, Moon and the Earth. This is a solar eclipse. And this demonstrates perfectly that the umbra, which is the darkest part of the shadow, gets smaller as you raise the moon away from it. So it gets to a certain point, which would probably be maybe about there. You can see it. That's the original size with the coin next to it. And now that's the size when the moon is moved away from the earth. And then you'll see, as I've moved through here, and now you'll see the umbra and the penumbra up close. same size we move the moon away we just pause it there and we can see this is getting smaller that's the umbra and outside is the penumbra I mean there it is guys now I never knew any of this right until I actually did some proper research now on a flat earth this can't happen guys because how far away is the sun and the moon if it's circling? I mean, it just doesn't work. If it, if it worked on the flat earth, it would be modelled perfectly. It's not. It's not. Look, I don't know how many flat earthers will see this. You want this to be your reality, guys, when it's not your reality. There might be something else. It could be a simulation. I don't know. But I 100% guarantee you that this cannot be modelled on the flat earth. And I get people saying, oh, well, you're begging the question. It's a fallacy blah 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 no it's not because it's demonstrated people say you don't know what the luminaries are and, and 
you know, being real with myself, no, I can't actually go up there and say, yes, it is, this is what it is. The demonstration of how it works on a globe model is modelled perfectly. Flat Earth cannot be done. Change my mind, guys. Anyway, so, so I mean, at this stage, I was, I was quite happy. I was relieved. It was like, ah, oh, you know, why didn't I look into this earlier? I should have looked into this earlier. And, and I think it was because I had said in, in part one and two i wanted to believe that the earth was flat i wanted to and i wanted that to happen i was searching for that and putting everything else to the side and then i decided to look into a few more globe earth channels and now a lot of them i don't really like so the channels i did go to and i do like is ruha flat earth math and wolfie 6020 and i trusted what they had to say so I went to Flat Earth Math's channel. He's not, he hasn't been around for a little while, so I hope he's alright, but he's uh, stopped making videos. Wolfie's channel resonated a lot with me, and, and I started going through a few of his videos. I was finally being real with myself, and I was going onto these channels and having a look and, and actually doing some proper research. So I want to also just mention this YouTube page, plus a Discord server that is run by this guy, Jim Panda. It's a 24 hour live debate. So come over here first, familiarize yourself with what they're about. Jim Pan has been around for a long time, he knows his stuff. So get over here, subscribe. These guys are great. If you dare, venture into the Discord server, have your say. These guys are really welcoming. I said I'm an ex flat earther, no one laughed at me, no one abused me. <laughs> um and they just accepted me straight away and said good on you. So yeah, highly recommend these guys. There's some funny people in here for some classic memes. A really great place to just sit and listen. Here's was I used to battle him a while back. So anyway, get over to the site, have a have a have a listen. So getting back to it, I also realised after all these years, the flat Earth does not have a map. It doesn't have a model to explain how things like a lunar eclipse would work. And to me, that's a big problem after all of these years. What I also want to mention just briefly is there has been a 747 pilot who's come out and offered. Flat Earthers, his services to fly a 747 jet across Antarctica. He'll offer his services for free, but the Flat Earthers have to charter the plane. And I don't know how much that, that, that will cost. If they're serious about this, they would have crowdfunded for something like that. Or they would have crowdfunded to send a high-ranking Flat Earther down to Antarctica to see a 24-hour sun. And film it, or whatever, just observe it. And, and that would settle it once and for all as well. And after all these years, they could have crowdfunded for four years to get this, and they could they could have somebody there by now, or they could have paid for a, a, a 747 to fly over the South Pole. And the pilot said, look, you can bring your instruments on, your compasses or whatever, so you can make sure it, it's a legit flight. But I can guarantee you that no flat earther will ever take up that deal. It just won't happen, they just won't do it. So that's basically it, guys. I wanted to make this video... Not for myself, I'm not here to make any money, I'm not here to get tons of subscribers, although it would help. Um, it just shows me that, that you're interested in my videos, because I, I am going to make more videos. Some of the videos I've thought about making was roasting flat earthers and globers, just for, just for a laugh, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now my channel is new, I don't know how many views this is going to get. I've just started venturing into the Discord channels and, and other global channels, but I wanted to make this video... Or would be flat earthers or current flat earthers so it's just to give them something to think about a few things to look out for some red flags or what have you you know if they're if they're real with themselves i'll step outside of the echo chambers and go and do some research i'm going to leave links for some of the globe channels that that i i trust but whatever you do please keep an open mind and uh just just logically think about it like it's quite easy to get caught up in channels like david weiss and Juranism and bob and Nathan Oakley, I've got nothing against those guys, I mean they believe what they believe like I said, especially David Weiss, it's very convincing, very convincing and it's not until you actually look into it and, and actually venture outside the echo chamber as I said and go into these channels like Wolfie6020 and these guys are constantly looking at the flat earthers and what they're saying and they're making videos to debunk what the flat earthers are saying and they're, and they're doing quite a good job at it. So that's it guys, it's my journey that's why i left the flat earth thanks for coming along thanks for listening and if you like the video consider hitting the subscribe button hit the like button or dislike button but 
leave a comment tell me what you thought leave links in the comment section i'm always i'm i'm, I'm always learning i'm always wanting to learn uh, you know and and sometimes the best information comes from from the listeners comes from you guys so anyway thanks again and uh we'll see you in the next video cheers bye